Hey guys, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. So we're on the topic this week of contact point and specifically today discussing, you know, kind of the focus of the eyes. Where should the eyes be looking at the time we're hitting the ball? And I think everybody that grew up playing sports, not just tennis, you heard it from coaches and parents and friends, watch the ball, watch the ball. Okay, so we got Roger Federer is kind of the poster child for watching the ball, right? The guy is unbelievable in terms of keeping his head still and his eyes on contact until after contact occurs. And as a tennis coach, trying to deliver a message to somebody who's possibly struggling with miss hitting or, you know, whatever, they, whatever the case may be where, where contact just isn't as pure as it should be, Federer is a great example of you know where the focus of the eyes should be now with that being said you look at a player like Novak Djokovic and that guy does not actually keep his eyes on contact he lets them drift more forward and my guess is that that he's done such a good job anticipating where the ball is going to be when his racket gets there that he doesn't feel the need to put his eyes directly on contact. He just knows the ball is going to be there. And that's not something all of us have the luxury of doing. But just to be clear, it's not a mistake if you guys are not keeping your eyes down the entire time. I mean, as a teaching pro, we're the biggest culprits because normally when I'm hitting, I'm trying to watch my, my student over there and I'm not really afforded the luxury of keeping my eyes down all the time. So I've gotten in this habit where, you know, similar to a, to a Djokovic type situation, I'm trying to watch my player so much that I don't think I look at the ball very clearly when I'm hitting, but I've anticipated where it's gonna be, and therefore I catch pretty good contact more often than not. Um, kind of where I wanna go with this is, you know, when a player does start to look up a little bit, if we go that route and we start to anticipate well and the eyes start to drift up, what we gotta be really careful of is kind of yanking the head out of position. If my eyes not only come up, but now my head starts to yank up, that can control the rest of my body. So if you guys watch this forehand, you know, you'll see that a lot where a player miss hits a ball badly because not only did the eyes come up, the head did too and it pulls the entire body away. So be very careful. You know, if you guys watch my eyes here, I'll let them kind of drift off the ball. But I've, I've made pretty darn sure that letting my eyes drift is not going to control the rest of my swing. I'm able to keep that all intact. Um, so everything in moderation, I guess, is, is the idea here is that if we're going to, you know, not go the Federer route, and obviously if, if you guys can pull that off and have that good a focus as a coach, I would say that would be option one for you. But if you are gonna go the route of allowing the eyes to kind of drift up a little bit before contact, make sure that it's just not so severe that that starts you know, pulling you out of a good set position to hit the ball, okay? Uh, contact point obviously is just so key and I think it's always just been assumed that you better keep your eyes right there. I'm dispelling that a little bit, but make sure we do that in moderation and we don't start to let it go negative on us, okay? So that's all I got for you guys today. We got a bunch more videos coming this week on Contact Point, really good topics. Uh, but until then, please click like below this video. And if you happen to be watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks and we'll see you soon.